Welcome to V101 TV. I am Tim Smith at tsmith underscore co on Twitter. Uh, this episode is going to start off a brand new series following Veeam's Availability Orchestrator. Uh, so we're going to start with an installation. Next video will cover configuration and then we'll go through some failover steps and recoveries. So the first step is obviously to download the ISO file from Veeam's website and mount it here. And you'll see I've done that, and so we can go ahead and proceed with the install. So of course, first thing we always need to do is accept the EULA. And these are some of the features. So we've got the orchestrator server, the web UI, and the Veeam One monitor client. So orchestrator comes with the orchestrator service, an embedded Veeam backup and replication server, and a Veeam One monitor. Uh, this is not the full-blown Veeam One. Uh, this is just going to be used for business view which allows us to grab some tags from vSphere or create our own. I'm going to go ahead and leave the default installation path. We'll go ahead and apply our license. And you can see just like previous Veeam products, uh, we go ahead and look at dependencies and if they're not there we can go ahead and install them. Okay, so now we've gone ahead and installed all of our dependencies. Let's go ahead and proceed on next. So this is going to be the service account. Normally you would dedicate a particular account uh, on your domain to run the, the uh, VAO services. In this case, uh, for my lab, I'm going to go ahead and just use my domain administrator. And here's where we have our options. So by default, we're going to install in the program files path. We've got a couple databases that we're going to create on this SQL Express instance. And also we have, uh, just like in VBR, our catalog path, our NFS data store for vPower NFS. We can go ahead and specify additional settings if we're going to have an external SQL server, uh, which you would want to do in production. Uh, since this is a lab, I'm going to go ahead and use the SQL Express version and keep all these defaults. And so now we're going to go ahead and install SQL uh, 2012 Service Pack 3 first. Then we'll go ahead and install Availability Orchestrator, the embedded Veeam Backup and Replication Server, and Veeam One Monitor. This process can take a little bit of time since it's these three packages, so we'll go ahead and speed up this video. Okay, now the installation is complete, so we can go ahead and click Finish. And because of some of the installation changes, we need to go ahead and restart. So we'll do that now. So once we're restarted, we can go ahead and log in with our credentials. Okay, so we're met with the initial configuration wizard, which will help us walk through setting up our first site. There's two types of sites in VAO. The first is your DR site, which contains your replicas and your disaster recovery resources. The second is a production site, and this contains your production virtual machines. Now you can have multiple production sites and a single DR site. So your first site has to be your DR site. Next, we want to give this site a name. I'll go ahead and call this Home Lab. Make sure you give it a good description. Um, this information is going to be included in the dynamic documentation. So you'll want to make sure that you keep it accurate and verbose as well. Obviously for a home lab, that, wasn't, that won't matter. The administrator for this particular site, so we set up and logged in as the domain administrator. So if I add current user, it's going to be my domain admin. Uh, you can set up multiple users here, which will be the administrator for this site, which is our DR site. So we have the option of deploying a VAO agent. This is an agent that will get installed on a Veeam backup and replication server or multiple Veeam backup and replication servers. So if you have multiple servers handling your replication jobs, handling your backup jobs, this agent will get deployed to those and be able to use those resources. 
if you're using Enterprise Manager, you can simply enter the address for the Veeam Enterprise Manager server here, and it will deploy out to every VBR server connected. The reason that we want this agent in there is because this agent is going to be responsible for orchestrating uh, recovery of replication jobs, so their failovers, but also it's going to grab saved credentials from your backup environment. So when you're backing up your virtual machines, you have application aware processing, you're going to be having those credentials saved for that. This can import it so those credentials can be used for your replication jobs and specifically the test lab portion of those so we can run some tests. I'm going to just use the embedded VBR to define my replication jobs. So I'm going to go ahead and choose skip here. Now the items that were skipped were the remote access credentials, service credentials, synchronized credentials. Those are all relating to accessing the VBR console. Last is our vCenter server. So I'm going to go ahead and enter in credentials here to attach to my vCSA server. This is going to be my vCSA server in production. Um, normally you would want to attach to your DR, but since I'm going to be running a single site, I'm actually going to attach both vCenter servers in. Uh, so to start with, we'll go ahead and attach the one, and once we're in the configuration of the main product, we'll be able to add that in. So clicking next, it's going to go ahead and connect to that vCenter server, add it into inventory, and then we'll come up on our summary. So here, we've got our server name, the site description, all the information we entered in above. The last thing to do is click finish and it'll apply it to us. So now when we go to this URL in the future, uh, server name colon 9898, we'll be able to go in, define failover plans, add inventory, add in our virtual labs, and etc. So that finishes up the initial uh, installation and configuration of VAO, and the second server will log in and will start the continued configuration of setting up failover plans and virtual labs. Be sure to subscribe so you can follow along in this series. Thanks.